you doing today? Welcome to another one of Charwell's Virtual Teaching Kitchens. My name is Tim Dunn. I'm the executive chef at UMBC in Baltimore, Maryland. Go Ravens! We just said go Ravens. We're going to do a little NFL weekend special here. We're going to make some pico de gallo and some guacamole and have ourselves a little bit of a party on Sunday. Pico de gallo, which means uh, beak of the rooster. Why? I don't know. According to the lore, you used to eat it with your hands like this. Pick it out like that. Obviously, you can't do that now in COVID, but that's what it means. Pico de gallo is made everywhere. Some people uh, make, some people call it salsa fresca. Some people just call it uh, uh, salsa. We're making a traditional pico de gallo with tomatoes, limes, onions, cilantro, and jalapenos. You can make it with any kind of thing you want. I make mine sometimes with orange and cucumber for a fish. I've also made it with strawberries and pears. So please enjoy it. Please enjoy the, uh, the ride. We'll give you a few tips to make sure you're listening as we go along, all right? So the first thing I like to do is you have your tomato. You don't want them too firm, you don't want them too soft. I like a little bit of a crunch to my pico de gallo, so this is still pretty firm. If you cut it open and you see some yellow or green, don't use that, put it to the side, we'll figure out another use for that. The first thing you do is just slice the top off. We're gonna take that, leave it to the side, I'll show you what to do with that later. And then you just take, and you wanna slice it about a quarter of an inch thick. Kind of go from there. I try also not to use the end just because you don't want to eat that and you pick it a guy. We're going to use those later for a little trick. Um, as you see, I'm kind of going along. I'm going to cut all my tomato slices first. That way, I'm not going back and forth in between different jobs. To practice your cutting, to practice your cutting, you're going to want to hold your, not, hold your fingers behind your knife. In a, in a nice knuckle position like that, and you're just going to slice it right down. This way, this, the knife is not going to cut you. Let's see, this, this tomato is pretty green. I'm not going to use that because I don't want my, my guests or my, my friends to eat that. We'll put that aside and go on to the next one. So, once you got all your tomatoes cut, and you see I'm in, in stacks here. You just want to go ahead and have you feel comfortable. If it's one, if it's two, if it's five, you want to cut them each way. So you end up with a little, a little bite-sized piece. Go back the same way, do the same thing with all of them. There are over 10,000 varieties of tomatoes in the world. From great Roma, what I'm using right now are very, very simple. Uh, we call them five by six tomatoes, but the simple tomatoes you get at the store any, any day. Roma tato, Roma tomatoes are probably the best tomato to use for pico de gallo, but we're using simple house tomatoes, let's say. So one of the good things about eating fresh tomatoes is that. It is uh, great for body, uh, body skin, for skin, heart health, and rich in nutrients. It's a superfood. We do a superfood every month, and this is one of the superfoods we do. We're then going to take that, scoop that right into our bowl here. We got about a pound of tomatoes here. Remember, I was telling you we had, you know. We're doing our best not to throw anything away here at Cal, you know, at UMBC. You should be doing that also back at your home cooking. We're going to take these other tomatoes we left out. We're just going to dice these, kind of rough chop them, however you want. Even the green ones, we're going to rough chop those a little bit. We're going to throw them in this little mason jar over here. We're going to make ourselves an infused oil. So this is just going to, you can pretty much do this with anything. You see, we're actually going to make a tomato and avocado, uh, tomato and cilantro infused oil. Let that sit for a day, a week, a month. If you want to heat it up, that's even better. That's great. Next, we'll do is we take our onion. So, a lot, lots of times, home cooks try to cut things the way they've seen it online or, on, or you know, professionally or just don't even know how to cut things. I've always found it easier to cut things when you have a flat surface. So, I always tell I always tell the new cook to take that onion, put it on a nice flat surface, same thing with my fingers, I'm going to pull those back. 
going to slice those. We'll go back the other way. We want to use about for about a pound of about a pound of uh, tomatoes. We're going to use about about a one half onion for about six ounces. We're going to toss that in our container. So jalapenos, right? Jalapenos. Everybody loves jalapenos. Right now, I love jalapenos. These are obviously not. You should always work with gloves when you're doing jalapenos, or not touch your face. Of course, in COVID, we should be touching our face anyway, right? What gives what gives a uh, jalapeno what gives jalapenos the flavor and the heat are the seeds. So depending on how how hot you want your uh, pico guy, you can leave the seeds in or take the seeds out. I'm going to show you to do it both ways. It's very simple. You just run your neck down the outside and take out the seeds. We're going to use one piece of my oil to make my tomato oil a little bit spicy. So still think of hot peas, they get very scary. It's real, it, you don't have that real hot heat flavor. The trick to do, solve that is to cut the dice these as small as possible. If you dice these real small, your guests will get the, the heat of the jalapeno, but not with a flavor of the jalapeno, but not that overbearing heat. The same thing, we're going to dice these pretty small. Go ahead and put that in there. You see, this is so simple to make, right? So you're here talking to you, taking me 10 minutes to make this. Boom. The next thing you need to put in there is a little bit of cilantro. A lot of people have a, oh, I hate cilantro. It tastes like soup to them. That's actually a genetic, a genetic thing. It's not something they can fix, if you want to say that. All these stems we usually throw away. Let's not throw them away. Same thing, let's chop them up. You can eat the stems you want to, these will go right in my oil. So now I have a spicy tomato cilantro oil. I can't wait to put that on a salad. So we're gonna rush this, rough chop this. Once again, the smaller you, the smaller you chop it, the better off you are. If you're real quick, your guests like how I uh, like cilantro. Personally, I like a nice cilantro flavor. I'm gonna put about, I'm just put about half a jalapeno in my pound of tomatoes. I'm gonna put about two, maybe two and a half teaspoons of chopped cilantro in there as well. All right? The next thing you want to do is lime juice. Fresh lime, whenever you use a fresh product, is way better than using a, a, a pre bought product. Um, these are just regular old limes you get in the store. If you, if you run those against the ground a little bit, you kind of loosen them up a little bit, you get more juice out and make your life a little bit easier. So you cut them all in half, the ones I'm going to use. Well, I, like, I actually like my pick of the guy a little bit more citrus flavor to it. So I'm going to do, do a little more lime. You want to squeeze your lemon or lime, or anytime you're using sushi, you want to squeeze it through a strainer so all the seeds that will be in there don't fall into your uh, into your product you're making. Uh, it's a real pain to get those seeds out if you have to. All right, so I got my lime juice. I'm going to go ahead and just pour that right in there. And then I just have a little bit of salt here. It doesn't need pepper, doesn't need anything else. I'm maybe about a, a tablespoon, or I'm sorry, a teaspoon, or a teaspoon and a half of salt. And then we're going to go ahead and just mix that all up. Now, if you let that sit for about a day, those flavors will really start popping, it'll really be great. It'll have a nice, fresh, crunchy flavor to it. Um, that's the pico de gallo, it's very simple, right? It took me 15 minutes, 10 minutes here to talk about it. Um, like I said, you could do that with oranges, you could do that with cucumbers, you could do that with anything you want. And have, you know, experiment, have different have different flavors, do different things, like I said. Um, once you have your pico de gallo made, it's, a simple, it's simple to make your uh, guacamole. To make the guacamole, you're just going to take about two avocados, you take about a half, about a, two ounces of uh, pico de gallo. Toss that in there. To open an open avocado, you kind of go halfway through in your hand. You see, see that pit in the center? And you end up with that. Now, this avocado is pretty brown. That's okay. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to use that part of the avocado, should I say? So you can still use avocado in the brown. You scoop it up, just dump it right in there. This brown part, a lot of people will throw that away. Nope. If you really wanted to, you can mix that with a little bit of coconut milk, and make yourself a great uh, homemade mask for your face. Same thing over here. Go cut through. Avocado looks much better. 
And you see I'm not throwing, I'm sorry, I should have said earlier, the pit, you put about a half, a quarter of an inch in, you twist and you pop the pit right out. And we're gonna show you a couple tricks with those pits also in a second. Go ahead and scoot the whole entire avocado into your guacamole or into your pick of the guy the bowl right over here. And all you gotta do, we already, we already put salt in our uh, pick of the guy, so we don't need to put any more salt in there. Um, you can use your hands to mix this up. You can use, I'm using just a wooden spoon to mix this up. But that's really all there is to it. I'm gonna put a little more lime juice in that because I like, as I said, I like citrus in my guacamole. I love citrus, I'm kind of a bitter person. So I got a little bit of lime juice left over. I'm gonna pour that in there. To mix it all up, then we have our guacamole as well. So I didn't throw these pits out for a couple reasons. Reason one is if you throw a pit into your guacamole and get it all covered up, your guacamole will turn brown on you as quick, okay? Obviously remember to take it out before you give it to your guests because they don't want to eat a pit full of guacamole. Other thing you can do is you can, you can shave this with a, either what's called a microplane or if you have a sharp knife and get it really small, put it into a smoothie in the morning. It gives you a little extra fiber, a little extra uh, vitamin A, B, and C, which are uh, very good for you. Obviously the avocado is great. A great food for you, high in omega-3 acids. Uh, so this is one of the best foods you can eat. And then, as you see, I didn't throw the skin away because if you, if you want to flip, flip these skins over, let me show you what's a little more powder, but you flip these skins over and you rub them on your skin before you go take a shower, it's going to exfoliate, exfoliate your body a little bit and make it make it make your skin smoother and everything. Um, the one thing I didn't show you, which I showed you, is I kept my onion scraps. We use that for making a stock or making any kind of onion broth if you want. That's great to have in your house for uh, any kind of savory cooking. Well, I hope you all learned a little bit of something. I hope you weren't as messy as I was when you did it. But thank you for coming by and hope to, have, hope, hope to see you real soon. Thank you.